Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The Sulky Show uh, with your host, Sarah Thomas. That's me, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, no Darren Owen again this week, so I am uh, sailing the ship alone, which is always dangerous because I don't really know what I'm doing, but we're winging it. Uh, last week wasn't a total disaster, and hopefully this week won't be either. Uh, this week, I am joined by York Harness Raceways Racing Manager, Craig Stevenson. We're going to go through the card from York. But first of all, Craig, how are you doing? Uh, not too bad, Sarah. Good to, back to be in the swing of things, eh? Uh, we've already had a qualifying meeting, but we start tomorrow for, for real, yeah, eh? This is it. We are, yeah, back to racing at York. Um, so I was going to say it's been a long time since I've seen you, but it hasn't actually because it's been about a fortnight, I think, since the qualifying meeting. Um, yes. But it's a long winter with uh, with not much to do on the uh, the horse front. You maybe enjoyed it. You maybe had a chance to, you know, put your feet up and relax a little bit. I have cracked the jokes. We've been very busy at work. Uh, I'm still working tonight, so plan to be finished at half past six, but we're meant to be leaving at half past six tomorrow morning. So we'll need to sneak away early. Uh, that could be the case. I was going to say to you, I, I know you were working night shift tonight, so uh, yeah, that's going to be a long, tiring day for you tomorrow. I uh, know. Uh, so, uh, we, we've done it before, we'll do it again. It's on the love of this sport. It's the adrenaline. The adrenaline keeps you going. I know certainly the adrenaline keeps me going when uh, when it's been a late night the night before, but I, I don't have any excuses tomorrow. It's an early start for us, but I should be in my bed relatively early tonight after the qualifiers at Corbywood. Well, one, one question I would ask you, are you going to be there in time for the first qualifier? Because yours is in the first qualifier. I, I will be there for the first qualifier. <laughs> we've already uh, we've done the, the plan of attack uh, from the stables because uh, George Carson is coming with us as well as the owner's guest. So, um, yeah, we, we, it's, I, I'm not going to say it's military precision at the moment because with George, God love him, um, nothing is military precision, but there will be a plan in place. That plan might not be finalised until like 11 o'clock tonight when I'm going to my bed and I'm like, right, George, this is the time, this is when we're leaving, but we will be there for the first qualifier because I would like to see my horse going. So um, we might be in two minutes before they start. Jason might be calling them onto the gate, but I will not miss that horse going around the track. So, um, yeah, just if there's anybody queuing at the gate and, and in my way, just wave them out of the way and I'll just like, ram my way through in the pickup. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a two o'clock start tomorrow for the first race. The qualifiers starting at, is it 12 o'clock, Craig? 12 o'clock, yes. 12 o'clock yes. on the qualifiers. Uh, but the first race on the seven race card uh, starts at two o'clock tomorrow. And it's starting with the first race of the season at York, the Smart Bookmakers Pace Heat 1. So obviously we're starting with heats and finals at York's opening meeting. Um, and we're jumping straight into Heat 1, Race 1. Uh, eight horses, as far as I'm aware, no non-runners at the moment. Um, you might be able to kind of pick me up on a couple there as we go through possibly if you've been alerted of any. But eight runners in Race 1. You'll have had a better chance to look through this than I have. Obviously, you did the draws live on Facebook the other day. I've only kind of scanned this quickly last night. What's kind of jumping out at you for the first race? Uh, so you've always got to follow horses where I've had a run. So I would take uh, two or three out of the race. Reed's Louis has drawn one. Uh, it should have a the run of the race. But not a lot of pace on the outside of it. So it should get an easy lead. Uh, Oh, good Cora will follow through first run this year. Uh, Dream Fair Duke always finishes well, but the the, the flying ointment could be Dragonfly. Uh, don't I don't think I don't fancy them. Uh, Manhattan Gangster or Reed's Coco in their first runs this year. Stateside dude is the is the best horse in the race, but it's got too much to do. It's quite an interesting race, actually. It looks to me, it looks quite competitive. I've not had a chance to run through this with Mister Smart Bookmaker himself for him to tell me what he fancies. So I am. Um, officially these are just my opinions now but there's a, a lot a couple of things to take into consideration you obviously mentioned there the horses that have already had a start this year Reed's Louis uh, finished second at, at Tier Prince last weekend stateside dude although unplaced in that race still ran in a very very competitive race uh, you know on, on paper that was a very competitive race that he ran in and, and didn't discredit himself at all has had that run too uh, Dream Fair Duke, another horse, he finished third uh, and was finishing strong, which I think is is kind of his signature move now as well. So you've got those horses to take into consideration. And you touched upon Reed's Dragonfly there as well. You know, first start of the season, I say boldly, I don't remember the horse racing last week at Tier Um, But the Hayfield Flight Stable massively, massively, you know, started their season last Saturday night on the right foot. Three winners on the card there. James drove all three of them. 
they really, you know, they really got going straight away at that opening meeting. So you would imagine they probably fancy a couple of their chances now tomorrow. Yes, yes. I'm sure Dragonfly was in the qualifiers two weeks ago. And James never knocked James never knocked anything about everything was just nice and easy. Very uh, plenty plenty all season to go with this horse. Uh it's got a good chance tomorrow. Oh, the front the front's the place to be tomorrow is forecast rain, eh? Oh yes, it is forecast rain. I have been watching that forecast all week because I have a, a slight issue with um waterproofs required. I'm going to have to go shopping before Corbywood tonight to get waterproofs for tomorrow because unlike everybody else who can just sit in the grandstand or shelter where the bookies are, I have to stand out in that rain. Um, so I need to be prepared for this. I'm not keeping everything crossed. It's not going to rain, but I think uh, I think I could be onto a loser there. So, you know, to, to us there, just to sum up quickly, quite an open race. I think there's been probably three or four horses in that race that have got a real strong chance of winning. Yes, yes. Uh, well, originally for me, uh, it's the one pole was uh, hard to give away. Yeah, and I was actually, I was impressed with him at Tear Prince the other week because he was entitled to maybe not finish as strong as he did, but he, he ran on quite well at the finish to finish second in his race after quite, he was he was applied hard the first quarter, he was applied again in the third quarter to take on the leader, Kentucky Jungle Joe there at Tear Prince and, and still ran on at the finish better than Kentucky Jungle Joe, Joe did, um, so that, that probably was quite an eye-catching run. Uh, race two then is the second heat of the Smart Bookmakers Pace, another eight horses face the starter. And again, on paper, this looks to be quite a competitive race as well. Yes, it's in line, this one. That's the only thing. Cashall gets the gate itself. Uh, if Cashall comes in the form it was last year, it should win this very easy. But it's not had a start this year, that's the thing. The, the back, no breaks is the one that I'm revolving around in this one. No breaks finished very strong. And I think if there are pressure on applied to Hamish's other horse, I said that one might come through and pick them all. Are we looking potentially here at Willie Greenhorn getting uh, two winning catch drives from that stable? Because there was talk on Facebook during the week. Uh, it was Willie Greenhorn's birthday. Happy birthday, Will. Uh, I did see that Hugh had uh, basically said that Saturday night's drive on uh, Stash the Cash and Tear Prince was his birthday present. And I think Will was maybe angling for another one this weekend. But obviously, Hugh's taken the drive on Cash all wise move on the gate by himself. You know, you alluded there to his form last year at York. Uh, I think he was the fastest horse. He was the fastest horse in the British Isles last year. Not just at York, he wasn't. He did post the fastest time in the entire season in the country. Um, but Hugh did mention in the sulky show before the Crock of Gold, I think it was that there are. I think he, it was reference to windows of opportunity with this horse where he comes into patches of really good form. Um, whether they've maybe ironed that out now, and this horse could actually run, you know, a full season of of the standard that he was able to to peak at last year. Be interesting to see. The draw obviously massively helps with him there. Um, you mentioned no breaks. Ran on very very strong in that Anto Ross Memorial last week to finish second. Quite an eye catching finish as well. Really was chasing Plan B down at the line. Although James Hayfieldwright said in the interview after the race he had eased off the horse, thinking he'd got it comfortably. Could see no breaks coming and, and didn't really have to chase the horse on because. He, he, he thought he still had it. So plan B, I mean, if he brings the form that he brought in from last week into this, although he's on the fourth line, he has got the rail immediately. That is one advantage he's got that no breaks hasn't. If no breaks wants to take back to the rail, he's going to have to go behind plan B, I would imagine. If plan B can keep tight to the horse in front of him. Uh, and all of the other horses then, all good Hanover. He was quite an eye-catching horse at Tear Prince as well, I felt. Uh, finished third in his race. Quite, a, quite an impressive third, really. Um, if you take into consideration the layoff that he's had, uh, and Laneside Layla possibly disappointed connection slightly, but I do think there was a tack malfunction uh, mentioned during the week, which may have led to that. So Laneside Layla possibly wanted to keep an eye on as well. The remainder we haven't seen this season, so it's a case of, you know, they could really surprise us and, and come out. But looking at the form we've got from that one week of racing and the qualifiers beforehand, you're taking cash all, no, sorry, you're taking no breaks, not cash all. I would be inclined to take plan B, I think. Uh, I think the Hayford Bates are looking to get a more consistent season out of this horse. Um, he started on the right foot last week. You know, if he can bring that to the table this week, I think he'd be very, very close in this. So you're deserting Harry? I'm deserting Harry only on the basis that um, he hasn't had a run this year. So obviously some horses, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm teaching grannies how to suck eggs here a little bit. Everyone who's watching this knows a lot about horse racing and how to train horses, but Judy's Hazard may not have had that the, the fast work into him um, that's kind of required to really, really sharpen these horses up. He, you know, he wasn't seen at the qualifiers, I don't think. Um, 
and albeit Andrew and Joanne may have been taking the horse to the track and working him out with other horses by himself etc but those races really do bring horses on um, and that's why I'd be inclined to look at I'm you know I'm looking at plan b off the back of last week you're looking at no breaks off the back of last week that's why Cashall maybe at the moment you can't be confident in him so much because we haven't really seen him put that fast work in and, and, and see the preparation but a lot of trainers can do this behind closed doors. You know, they've got facilities at home. We don't get to see them. And that's where we kind of get caught out as punters, as bookmakers and as spectators a little bit. And as so-called experts trying to pick winners. Um, yes. I call these races at the start of the season fact-finding missions. That's my new phrase, fact-finding missions. We find out a lot about these horses now from the first couple of races. And that kind of sets us up for later in the season when we get into different race meetings, your big kind of two-day meetings on the grass, etc. Um, you know, and, and the, the races that the hard tracks have got uh, planned out as well. So it'll be an interesting one to see how, how this goes. But I think you and me are both kind of looking at the back markers and horses that raced last week and raced well. Yes, yes. Well, Hamish can always get his horses ready first time. He's got the best best track in Scotland, eh? without a doubt. Uh, Certain, yeah, certainly. That's the thing. He can do it at home. And you, we saw that at Tier Prince last week. Dream Fair Duke ran well. Uh, Stash of Cash was obviously a winner as well. Um, and No Breaks, again, trained by Hamish this year, ran on really well. So he's been able to do a lot of that prep work at home. And, and maybe Andrew and Joanna have been the same with GD's Hazard. Um, but I'd like to see a couple of runs into GD's Hazard before I, I, I start tipping him for these races. And also, secretly, Dave and Jerry, I don't want to jinx your horse because people, <laughs> I am a curse. So. Well, um, they're an interesting one for not maybe not tomorrow, but for the rest of the season. Special T is now at the Laidlers. Uh-huh. That's a horse I want to see coming back. Eh? Uh, eh, we've never seen it at his best last year. I'm sure he won at Port Marmacut later on in the year. Yeah. So I, I'd love to see it win for Paul Johnson, who's a great supporter of the job as well. Definitely. Um, I always enjoy it when Paul's horses win, I'll be honest. Um, it's, it's nice to see him in the winner's circle. He's not... He's not the most uh, chatty when you try to interview him, but you can see how much he's enjoying the win and how much he's enjoying racing his horses as well. So no, I'm with you on that. It would be nice to see a, a really good season in specialty as well off the back of that success over in Ireland last year. Uh, race three, then the first of the two trots. Now, this is a trot uh, restricted to geldings only because we had a mare's race. So obviously the geldings have fallen into this race. This is a mile and a half. I did notice that Trot Britain put a notice out this morning, I think it was, that all of the races in May will be over a mile and a half at the various tracks at the staging trots uh, this month. So that kind of makes my job a little bit easier as somebody trying to pick winners, because at least there's some consistency in the distances, even if the um, draws aren't always the same, you know, preferred trails, etc., or the horses for that matter. Um, let's go through this. I mean, this is a... This is an interesting mixed bag here, Craig, when you think about it, when you actually yeah. scan down through some of the names. I can't imagine there's many circumstances where you see these a lot of these horses in the same race together. Well, talking about names, Rocker Laidler, I had to phone him to ask who was driving his two. And he said, put Will Greenhorn on beach. That's the best thing for me, because I, I couldn't say the other names. <laughs> Great. So that means I'm leading the charge here and trying to pronounce right, well, some of these. Some of no, these haven't been like I didn't see these at Tier Prince last week, so I've not had a chance to get to grips with their names. Um, and I can't remember some of them. I think Darren called in a qualifier at York a couple of weeks ago, so I should have committed their names to memory. But some of these I haven't seen before. So this, I apologise. I'm going to apologise specifically to Will Evans and Katie Parry. Um, who spend most of their time, bless them, trying to get me to pronounce French names properly. It's not that I don't want to, it's that I can't. I sound ridiculous, but I'm going to give this a proper go. And if they're not right, let's just hope that my versions of their names don't stick, um, you know, and we can let Darren step in or, you know, any other professional commentator and pronounce these properly. Um, I don't I don't know where to start with this one, Craig, to be honest. I, I'm well, I do. I, I, I do really. I mean, going by how this race looks to me, I, I'm assuming it is just preferred on the gate as they are one to eight. Yes, one, yeah. one, one to five in the gate, six, one to five seven, on the gate. Eight, yeah, six, seven, line. eight on the second line. So for That's... me, the horse that really stood out last week at Tier Prince was Emirat de Levant. Yes, yes. Um, he, he, was, he was a horse that actually caught the eye in the qualifiers a couple of weeks ago behind Diamant de Gaudreau, uh, slightly overshadowed by the fact that everyone kind of came from there going, oh, God draws in really good form. He should win in the first couple of starts. He did do that, but Emirates de Levant finished second to him in the qualifier, then went on to finish second to him at Tier Prince last Saturday. So in this race, and he raced against Uni Universal Cat in that race, for me, Emirates de Levant is probably the form horse coming in. Yes. But we have some unknown quantities as well on the front line. 
Well, we've seen the, we've seen the number two horse in the qualifiers. Andrew Stenhouse was on it in the qualifiers for uh, John Varys' horse. That that will be winning races in the season, but I think this is I think getting a line of start off ever at De Levant is a bit hard. Uh, I've been told the Nicholson horse. I'll just say, we'll just call it a Nicholson horse because no, come I'm on, now, Craig. That's an easy one. Crazy do Cologne. Oh. You can just call the horse crazy. The horse's the horse's stable name is crazy, uh, so we'll just go with crazy. I've been told that's a nice trotter. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Any, I don't know nothing about the two rockers. Obviously, I've spoke to Will Greenhorn, and he's on Bobby Hall's horse, huh. and they said the other one is more a handful than Bobby's one. So he's on the. Maybe, well, we say the easiest one to drive. We don't know what, what abilities are the two. Hey, no, well, hang on a second. Is that what Rocker has told him? Has Rocker said, oh, here, mate, I'm just going to give you the, the easier one to drive. But in reality, what Rocker has actually done is given him the more difficult of the two to drive. Rocker's going to go around there looking really great and, and was going to struggle with the easy one. I don't know how much how much of a setup is going on here for Rocker. How bad could he be to Will? Well, it, Will's never won in a trotter, so could tomorrow be it? Could tomorrow be it? I, I'll be honest, I even, even with these unknown quantities, you know, we mentioned there, um, Cirrus Briole, Comanchero Beach and Crazy Duke Lawn and also Chambord from Entro. I said these very confidently. Oh, Could be wrong. Chambord, that sounds, like, that sounds like a good wine. Well, Chambord you mix with um, Prosecco. because My mother drinks yeah. that, so I know Chambord. Um, silent D I'm going with. From Entro, I, I, I don't feel there's any silent letters in that, so I'm just going to boldly say it. Those four we've not seen race. You did mention we've seen Cirrus Briolet in a qualifier. It was quite a nice finisher, actually. I was quite impressed with that horse. It was only over a mile, that qualifier as well. I don't think it was the mile and a quarter one. Um, yes, I'll, I'll come on. I'll be get a lot of fit. Um, that's two weeks since we've seen it, so it might play into places. Oh, Papa Smurf will be chasing them home as well. Yes, we can't uh, We can't not mention Papa Smurf. Uh, the... the uh, Matty Quinn's got in this time. This is Matty's chance to jump in quick and get Alan on board this week. Amadeo Gelma, um, you know, really, really nice horse last year. Won a lot of nice races. Um, I have seen him. He was he raced at Tier Prince. Mm, he raced at Tier Prince. I said that confidently. Uh, he no, York. No, he did not. It was a qualifier at York. John Innes, I think, drove him at the qualifier at York. I knew I'd taken a photo of him somewhere because I typed his name on Facebook when I posted the photos. You know, it's... And we can't even... We can't ignore uh, Vire, Virea de Regen. I always want to call him Virea but Vireo de Regen sounds better in French. Um, you know, seasoned campaigner, got a win last year with Kelly Peacock driving, I believe, in yes. the ladies' race. Yes. Um, but he is a horse that can win around York as well. But I think I think you and me both sensibly are, are really looking at Emirate de Levant. If he can if he can put in the performance that he put in at York in that qualifier and again in the race on Saturday at Tier Prince there, he's probably the horse to beat in the race, I think. Yes, the, the, he'll not hit the front till... Halfway down the back straight, that's where he's. Uh, once you get to the mile, he just keep on keeps on trucking. And I did say to Darren, and I spoke to Alan Hayter on me, and he looked very comfortable the last last time at York. Uh, last year he was just. If it, it looked a bit iffy, I think they've had they've had work done on him since then. Eh? He was now just feeling it last year, but this year he's very very comfy. He was putting in brakes last year. Yeah. And that was something that, you know, on Saturday night, qualifies slightly different because it's not necessarily a competitive event. So, you know, when Richard was driving the horse, he maybe was just coaxing him home and just letting the horse roll quietly without putting under too much pressure to get that confidence build back into him. Uh, but at Tier Prince at the weekend there, albeit, you know, I, he wasn't going to beat Godrell, but Richard was battling for that, you know, the places with Rory de Borg and Jovi Randall. So the horse was under that little bit more pressure coming to the line, didn't make any mistakes. So connections will take, a, you know, a lot of confidence from that. And so will the horse. Uh, so I think, um, I think this could be, could be the, the race for Emirat. I don't want to jinx him. I really don't because, you know, I, I went to Belgium with the connections. So I, I, I know them well. I like the horse. I'd like to see the horse get over whatever those issues were last year and, and get to the winner's circle. Um, and I think tomorrow could be the day for him. Fingers crossed. Race four, then we have a maiden race. Again, eight horses face the starter. Um, I'll let you jump in with this one. You might have slightly different opinions to mine, or we could be exactly the same again, which we'll see. I like, I like uh, Reed C and Bessina. I think it's a big, strong horse. It might, might take some beating in this race. The one I would tip to chase at home, and it's on the second line's air propaganda. Uh, Life you rogue, its first run. It was in a qualifier last year. Qualifier this year, it's maybe education. Oakland Notorious went nice last time. Richard Haythorn, I think, was on it in the qualifier at York. 
Uh, Air Frankel was bought a few years ago at York Sale, and I'm sure the Meadow Branch trained it at one time. It was Martin Monaghan's now footies I've got it, so I don't know how how good that is. Gold Digger was seen in qualifiers last year, but it's got there. It was it hasn't run before. So they'd see the same for me. Yeah, I think last year Gold Digger was run, it was in the qualifiers as a two-year-old, possibly um, just turned the horse away, maybe to mature, I'm not sure. It's always, you should, I think we should always be wary of a, a Layla trained first time out horse that we've, you know, not sighted in qualifiers before today, you know, this season, because yeah, the, the horse could literally be anything and, 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 and might be a, a runaway winner, we don't know. Uh, looking at the horses that you mentioned, Reed's CNB scene uh, has been an eye-catching horse. Amazon Echo, you know, that year older, that year stronger, He's a big horse. I don't know. Maybe are there a couple of horses in this race that maybe you might find too good for him tomorrow. I, I do see a lot of progression in the horse, um, but I think it maybe you know will take a little bit more time to, to get up there. Air propaganda. Um, I was quite strong on for Tia Prince after her qualifier at York. Uh, she maybe didn't have the race that connections kind of hoped for. Things maybe didn't quite go to plan. Um, stepping back to York I think she might go well and I think one of the of the, the horses that we haven't seen I, I know I've mentioned Golding there because it's from the champion stable but another horse that we should look at I think is Master Monet of Phil Arnott's uh, he's been quite active on social media during the winter uh, with his training and the horse looks really well you know looks really really well with him he's, he's got that horse in fantastic condition and and it could be it could be anything. So I, I think this is quite an interesting race. Again, as I call the fact finding missions, we've got those horses that we haven't laid eyes on this year. Uh, and, and they could be kind of upsetting the apple cart for the horses that we have already seen. So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at air propaganda as a horse that's raced already and that we've seen a couple of times on the track this season. And I'm going to take Master Monet as, as kind of the, the dark horse in the race, I think, is the, the big surprise. You know, we haven't seen it on the track. So could be an interesting one there. Moving on then to race five, we've got the pre Femme, which is the preferred free for all mares race for the Trotters. Another eight horses. Um, some of these have got slightly more interesting names to pronounce, but I think I've got them. I think I'm all right with these. I think I've done my preparation well enough. And I was typing these out last night that possibly I could do this. What are your thoughts on the race? I'll let you start. I'll let you commit yourself to horses. If you say Europe, on the basis of uh, Chico's easy to pronounce theory, then uh, I'll be disappointed in you, in you completely. I want you to go all out and pick a real French one. Right, we'll go for it. Uh, the one I don't know a lot about, and I've heard it's, it's meant to be half decent, is Catalan du Canet. Don't know how, if that's right. If they're not coming all the way for nothing, Matty Thomas and that coming for no. Wales. Uh, Grant's one qualified well. It, it got a half trip at Turf Prince. I'm just... I've got a question mark in my head that's travelling three weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much it took out of that. It's been to New York, qualifiers, been to Turpins and back to York. Uh, it, 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 it does take a lot out of horses, so uh, the back ones, I would. I always I always used to tip Joseph's horses, Joseph Ripley's, but then he, he always told me, please stop tipping them because then I've got a chance of winning. So we'll give Joseph a couple of weeks before we put the put the Donor on him. Uh, yeah. So we're leaving Damn Joseph. We're leaving Joseph out for this week. We're saying Joseph's got very little chance, and that isn't a true reflection of what we really feel. It's that we want to just keep the pressure off him. Is that what we're saying? Yes, yes. I would love to see Ronnie Ralph win. That's that's how that's how I'll be cheering on. Ron, Ronnie's a a great uh, character in the sport. Eh? He's always there with the kids, and uh, the boys love harness racing as well. So Ronnie's Ronnie's ventured into the trotters once again, and. For, from the five, Ronnie will just send it. Is that, is that what you're anticipating? You're anticipating Ronnie to send it. That's bold. That is bold because the horse, um, the, the horse actually was disqualified last Saturday night at Tier Prince, drawn eight of eight, uh, wide on the gate in that trot. The track was very loose um, that night, and I don't know whether that had some sort of impact on the horse being able to kind of get its grip as, as they were speeding away. You know, at that very often the fastest part of the race. Um, so Elka de Poy changed the drive there. Ronnie Ralph takes the drive on his own horse there. Uh, and you're obviously you've put some sort of curse on him now. But you reckon he's going to try and lead out for the five hole over a mile and a half race, which is an interesting tactic for anybody. Um, we'll talk Ronnie into it. We'll talk <laughs> right, Ronnie okay. into it. Right, okay. Is that you already have, or have I got to go to see him tomorrow before the race and say, look, Ronnie? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk him in it. Tell, tell him the best place, the cleanest place you're going to be is in the front. 
well that that's true that is actually true but the problem is if every if every driver in the race watches the sulky show now and takes that advice they're going to go into that first bend like an absolute bunch of lunatics and it'll be the back it'll be it'll be dan major at the back dame major as chico says it should be pronounced oh. at the back who, uh, who picks up the pieces afterwards um of the ones we've seen race uh, so far you mentioned fury the trio there uh, the collins trotter she she did she was impressive in her qualifier um over a mile a couple of weeks ago, possibly disappointed connections there at Tier Prince on Saturday night. Um, I think she was the betting favourite. There was a lot of hype around her. The travelling won't have done her any favours. It is a long way to travel. Um, but equally, I, I think, you know, people, I think even the Cullens themselves were probably expecting better from her than that. Uh, the sixth place finish there. But it was a clean mile and a half she put in. So that in itself is, is something to take forward from it because, you know, at least she wasn't unsettled enough and, you know, that she went off stride or anything like that. Uh, Bianca de Brue, I feel like I've never seen this horse, but it's got form at York, which means that I will have seen this horse because I've only ever missed, I think I've missed one York in the last three seasons. Uh, I just cannot for the life of me remember this horse. It's, it runs every, runs out every, nearly every week at York and uh, John Innes or Matty gets on it. It's, Matty's always had this horse. Uh, it wouldn't be a, the worst horse to win the race because John Innes, I don't think he's had a winner yet. He's, no. He's, he needs to christen them new colours. We certainly does. So that could be one that we could be cheering on. I mean, I, I cheer on everybody, really. I'm, I'm completely unbiased. I just cheer on whoever's in front because I get excited by it all. Uh, a new face there, Capitan de Canet, with uh, Stephen Williams driving there. You're right, coming up from Wales. Is that you know indicative of, of how they fancy their chances with this horse? I would need to go back and look through uh, my notes from the Ammon Valley qualifiers to see if this horse ran at Ammon Valley. Uh, in the last couple of weeks in, in qualifying meetings to see, you know, is there any information to be gleaned about that horse? Europe, I thought, went well in qualifier at York. Um, finished fourth at Tier Prince, but I think maybe we'll come on for the run. Uh, and then of your back markers there, really, Day Major, Dan Major, whichever way you're going to pronounce it, probably both of them are wrong, in my opinion. Um, she probably disappointed at Tier Prince. In fact, she did disappoint at Tier Prince. She was in a very competitive race alongside Emma Anthony Vaughan, Clement de Gaudrell, Universal Cat, that, that calibre of horse. Um, she was last in the race and, and did cause traffic problems for Calamara Brewe um, in the early part of the race as well. So she will have disappointed connections there. This is maybe a, a less competitive race um, in terms of the, the class of horse because a lot of the, the high grade horses are geldings. Um, but she possibly will still find it tough because there's some interesting faces on the front line there as well. So I'm looking forward to that one, definitely. Listen, the two trots, uh, I had Bill Green on the phone the other day and the two trots are absolutely minefields. It's very, very hard to pick. Well, do you know what? I'm going to, I don't, I do what I don't. I don't want to, I was accused of jinxing this trainer on Saturday Night at Tier Prince, but I have to give a mention to Cerise de Brue. Uh, Alan Hayton throat there jumps back to the Joe Quinn stable horses there. Um, which is obviously a partnership we saw working really well last year. So I mean, I've got a sneaky suspicion that Cerise de Brewer could be in at the business end of things with uh, Papa Smurf driving. Then we've got race six, which is the penultimate race on the card. Uh, this is an open handicap. Um, so we've got some maidens in here and then some higher rated horses. There's a driver change compared to what I've printed off the BHRC website now in the last half an hour. And that is that John Henry Nicholson takes the drive on Good Time Hal. Uh, for Caroline Kennedy. I, I was really hoping that there was going to be some sort of money changing hands there for that drive because I technically arranged that drive. So I feel like I'm working on commission, but if they're paying him nothing, then I'm going to be getting 10% of nothing. nothing no, that's good. That's good business. Um, I mean, I haven't told Caroline Kennedy yet that John Nicholson actually charges £300 per drive and I will be taking a 20% cut of that for the... Uh, the arrangement of it so sorry caroline she doesn't watch this anyway so it's fine i'm only joking he doesn't charge that kind of money to drive his, his mom and savannah should be getting every penny i've been running to the box week after, week after week and john during racing sits in this chair mm -hmm. john, big john's doing the work uh georgina and savannah and young john just jumps out the chair when the car's on it's unbelievable don't, no don't, please do not think that that is only on race day because i visited those stables and i made exactly the same point when i was there he stood there with his hat his baseball cap on and his glasses and his whip and it was like come on hand me the horse and i went you spent too much time in america mate get doing some work watching everybody else running around after him doing the work and he was chasing people on and i said oh no no no, no, this the best one. Do for Sarah at all. 
The best one, uh, Big John, I said to John, what did you get Georgina for her birthday? A new wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, Don't I laugh, because I work. had a new wheelbarrow once for Christmas, and it was the greatest thing I'd ever got. And John bought me a new wheelbarrow and a new broom a couple of months ago, and they were fantastic until George broke the broom. But then him and George went to B&Q one day, and I got a text when they were on their way back, and they just said, we bought you the most awesome brush. And the first time I used it, I had the two of them watching me, and they were like, isn't it awesome, though? And to be fair, it is probably the greatest it's, brush. It's, it's even better, a better brush than you're watching someday. Oh, oh, definitely. And those two can watch. <laughs> they can watch for Britain, honestly. Here's the raptor. <laughs> uh, right, so race six, eight horses here. Um, I'm going to let you jump in with this one, because, again, I think it's... No, I mean, having scanned through it, there's a horse probably that stands out in this for me, but I want to see what you think, Craig, first. The one, the one that stands out for me is Coford C. Coford C for should uh, was very impressive the last two weeks ago, just nice and easy. Could get to the front and dictate pace. Uh, they're, they're a good hardened horse in there, is, which will be finishing and always finishes West End Illusion. Uh, in the money, Grant might get stuck in behind horses here uh, because it's two lines of four. It's oh, the old maiden grade and the novice grade. It's this new system's got me baffled just now till I get, till I get my head around it. The M18s are the maidens, the 26s are the old novice. So it's I don't know nothing about Lexi's Rocky House Party. Don't know a lot about that. Stateside Hill, one times from lifetime times, isn't he? Up with Breeds May Fly or Co for C was I think it went two three last time. Mm -hmm. uh, nice, nice looking horse as well. Yeah, I mean, all I was looking in the money. Um, that was before you mentioned that it's four and four, four on the gate, four on the second line. Uh, I'm not the most observant when it comes to uh, start sheets, unfortunately. I just in my head every race has got five on the gate and however many on the second line. Not the case here. Still, don't think that's going to change my opinion though. I, I. I was impressed with him in the money uh, in the qualifier two weeks ago where he finished second to Spear Buggy. And then when the two those two horses went to Tier Prince last week, I was keeping an eye on how Spear Buggy went to then possibly get an indication of how in the money would go. Spear Buggy was beaten in the first race uh, narrowly and in the money was beaten in the second race, but was quite a strong finisher, I felt, in that race. I think it was the race where he finished just ahead of Dream Fair Duke, who we mentioned in one of the earlier races. So in the money for me, albeit behind Stateside Hill, I would still imagine that Willie Greenhorn is going to go forward off the gate drawn one. Um, house party, I saw in a qualifier at Tier Prince last week. Three-year-old, first start. There's probably horses in the race that have just got a bit more experience that I think uh, maybe a bit further forward as well. Uh, you mentioned Colford C there and West End Illusion. Good time, Hal. Um, it was a winner at Musselburgh a couple of years ago. It was a big... Kind of rolling horse um, that maybe if the track's going to be wet tomorrow and we're not going to see quite so much sort of so in the pace and sprint finishes if, if it's a race where they kind of go level quarters I don't think we should discredit good time Hal he'll be in good condition he'll be strong he'll be he should be relatively fit as well um, although this is his first start uh, interesting as well to see the Kennedys coming down from Scotland with him and like I said John Nicholson taking the drive there so depending on how the race pans out if there is a bit of early speed once they settle, perhaps Good Time Hal might make his move then and, and try and roll round. And, and, you know, at that point in bad going, is, is it potentially going to be tomorrow? If, if the track does go, you know, wet and mucky in that rain, you don't necessarily need to take the inside line, I don't think. It might be cleaner to actually sit too wide. You might be better parked in front, you know, with nothing in front of you than sitting behind and getting that kick back off the horse in front. So we'll have to wait and see. Definitely the one, the one, the one for just keeps on keeps on bouncing back. Apart from Cole for sees Reeds Mayfly, I seen it last year in the qualifiers and races, and it, it was if it's improved from last year, it'll be it'll, it'll be in the hunt as well. And I do think I think it's fair to uh, to, to make that assumption that, that some of these horses, these young horses that are behaving for weeks, will have found some improvement as well based on how their stable went, you know, in its entirety last Saturday night at Tier Prince. You know, they've they found the answers to questions with some of the horses that were winning, i.e. Plan B, who can be that bit inconsistent. So maybe if they've been able to, to iron out any kind of little things with those horses that are stepping out of maybe stakes races up into, you know, into these handicap races this season as three-year-olds and as four-year-olds, etc., they could maybe start the season strong as well. Uh, and then that then leads us on to the last race in the card, the Smart... Smart? The Smart? You'd think I'd get uh, his name by now, wouldn't you? I've been dealing with him long enough. I might 
the smart bookmakers final to be run in lines. Obviously, the first four from the first two races, which are heats one and two, they go through to the final. Um, is there anything really from those two heats that you think at this stage, you know, not knowing obviously what's going to qualify for the final, but is there anything from those two races that kind of you think is has got a strong chance of winning this? You'd, I'm just I've just turned it back over to the first race and trying to think that could be completely different with the draws and obviously the first four of them is going to qualify. Then the, then they did. They'd all need to ballot because they're all in the same thing. So it could be a completely different gate there. Eh? Then you're going to have on the second line, one of the second second heats. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put my neck out and say no breaks. You're going to go for a trailer. You're going to say a trailer for the final. I mean, I've I've I'm not looked... saying a trailer. I'm saying I'm saying an experienced horse who's you... been an old campaigner. Okay. Eh? Um, no, that's fair enough. That is that's certainly fair enough. And you know what? I think if on the in the same vein, if you're going with no breaks, which you, you know you have picked him in the heat as well, I would probably on that basis stick with Plan B. Um, on the on the same basis, I took him in the heat as you took no breaks. The experience, the form coming into the race. Um, obviously, we don't know how conditions are going to be affected by the weather. And obviously, at the end of the car, the track could have been cut up a little bit as well with that rain. We don't know at this stage if the weather's going to be bad enough that we can go with a start car without. Um, you know, that's another consideration to take into things. I know from reading, there's an online forum, a harness racing forum, and I, there's a tips to competition that gets run every year. And I do check it during the week. I like to see where people are leaning towards when it comes to some of these races and there seems to be a lot of support heat and final for cash all that you know we've discussed this it will be based on last year's form um but at this stage he is an unknown so you'll take no breaks to the final i'm gonna take plan b mainly because i own Le les and jean fell um a, a decent action photo and presentation photo if this horse wins because unfortunately i had uh, difficulties with fading light at tear prints and i didn't get the quality of photo i was hoping for um, and it's it's quite nice to to get those winners' photos because Les and Jean have supported racing and supported the tracks up and down the country. So um, I'm going Plan B. Slightly sentimental, but there is a little bit of logic to it. Yes, doesn't it matter where that horse race Jean travels everywhere? Doesn't it matter if Les is going? Jean will be there where yeah. Alison goes goes with Jean as well. Eh? So it's always a good family affair. Exactly, um, and it's nice for them to have a bit of fun now during the summer. Obviously, when they've had their their interest during the winter. Uh, with Silver Street Racing, now it's time for Plan B to step up and and uh, do the business. So that's where I'm going. Qualifiers before racing, we mentioned those. We'll not go through them, but there's a, a number of qualifiers. So obviously we are going to start seeing some more of these horses come through now, hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, and the next meeting in York is going to be on the 22nd of May, I believe, the next race meeting. Next race meeting, yes. We have we have pencilled in a qualifier next Sunday. Uh, we've asked the BHRC, that's the on request of a lot of trainers of trying to get two-year-olds ready for these races. So if we, I was trying to hang off a little bit to put the advertisement so Turpin's got a card, then we could put our qualifiers out so it didn't affect race meetings at other tracks. Uh, but hopefully we'll be there next Sunday as well. Okay, so it's just basically a case there of keeping up, uh, keep an eye on the social media and the BHRC website with regard to that qualifying meeting on the 16th. Yes. Race meeting on the 22nd, we're hoping, should be no longer behind closed doors. We're hoping we can get yes, no, that day. No, yes, that's that's the government guidelines, yes. Yeah. So we'll be sticking, sticking to that. And uh, we're going to try, uh, people keep on going on about these penalty-free races. So we're going to try the C-class races, which are penalty-free. <laughs> we're also, you'll see to, tomorrow's meeting has got a couple of drivers claiming allowances. Yeah. So... While the, the, we've got meetings with C-class lifts, the, uh, the penalty-free races, C-class lifts won't be in place at that meeting. But we will be allowing the mayor's lift. Mayors get five points a lift as well. So it's, there are that many things you can do, and it's, you need to be a Philadelphia lawyer to understand some of this. It's, I'm trying to get my head around it myself here. Eh? We'll get, we will get our heads around it eventually. And look, if it's, they're all incentives to you know keep horses in racing longer, keep horses, you know, coming back season after season and get horses out of this part of the season as well by putting those races on now where people are, you know, a little bit slower in getting those horses out. You know, it's all good for the sport. So uh, fingers crossed, as you said as well, their government guidelines, we can get a crowd back. It'd be nice to have a crowd back as well. I've kind of I've started to miss the uh, 
the chat in between races a little bit, although I am usually too busy. Just don't give me any extra jobs tomorrow, please, because if it's raining, I'm going to be miserable and I'm going to need to sit down between races in my little office and try and dry out a little bit before the next race. Uh, we'll, we'll be all right tomorrow. We'll just sail through it. And uh, yeah, bring an umbrella. No, I've got the umbrella. We finally got that umbrella off you last year, so I have got the umbrella. I just need to remember to bring it. And I think Marcia is joining us tomorrow. Marcia Thompson of Metcrem Products. I think she's coming along tomorrow as well. So yes, yes, she is. I to see her because she's obviously been supporting the track now for a couple of years. Um, and I think that is probably it, Craig. I shouldn't let you go. I don't know if you're having another power nap now before you start work later on, or or whether you just no, 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 for a no. Bit. No, no, I don't don't sleep during the day. I've been to the horses, so just sit and relax and make your dinner, get ready, go to work. There we go. Well, I shall see you tomorrow. I'm going to say bright and early. It'll be early-ish because I will be there before midday. I'll not be bright. That's a fact. I can guarantee it now because I'll not sleep tonight after these qualifiers at Corby Wood. I get too excited. I take too many photos and then I sit and edit everything and try and get ahead for the weekend. So I'll just see you tomorrow, basically. Yes, the winners can close our same place. Same place, yeah. So I look forward to it, Craig. Thank you very much for your time right. today. Thank and I will you. See you tomorrow. Right, thank you. Bye, Bye everybody.